Uh, so there's this show on Netflix called Squid Game. Almost all of the entertainment value is in watching people be mutilated and and killed in all of these gory and graphic ways. And this is really like a form of porn. This is this is torture porn. If you get off on a bit of mindless, graphic, bloody torture porn, then Squid Game is probably not the show for you. Because thankfully, Squid Game is actually a very well-written, character-driven story exploring the depths of human suffering and guilt. And surprisingly, it's taken over the world. Welcome! Well, we think it has. No one will ever really know because unlike the good old days where movie numbers could be somewhat checked, the streaming giants can tell us whatever they want and we'll have to believe them. But I do hope Squid Game is as popular as they say it is because it may finally show Hollywood, but I doubt it, that the general public who just want to be entertained don't give a monkey's nutsack about diversity and inclusion on screen. They don't care who the filmmaker wants to cast. And the idea that you have to see yourself a reflection of your own image up on screen to enjoy something is also a load of crap because the cast in Squid Game is 90% Korean and no one cares. We see ourselves in the humanity of people from all over the world, not whether their faces or genitals or worse still, who they want to shag, matches up with our appearance or feelings. Human emotion is what we connect with and it's always been that way. Many of us grew up loving The Wizard of Oz, but I can tell you, I'm not a little girl from Kansas with a voice that would make angels weep, even though I do have that outfit. Relating to bravery, fear, or sadness has nothing to do with colour, geography, genitals, or the lack thereof. Good creative stories is what we want. Where we need diversity is behind the camera. And I don't mean just handing over some franchise to some unqualified person who's not fit for the job. No studio should be like what Netflix has done here and be on the lookout for talented people with good ideas from all walks of life. Pick a good one. Now, I need to point out that I am no expert on Korean cinema, but I'm a big fan of nearly everything I've seen come out of Korea. They seem to be able to do what Hollywood's forgotten. They remember how to write a good script without Virgie signaling or pandering to some weirdo group. But of course, there have been some idiotic reactions. We say, ah, it's just entertainment. It, it doesn't have any effect on anybody. Come on. That's silly. What, what so I'm going to watch Squid Game and then go out and uh, join a death squad and start executing people? You think that's what I'm going to do? People do the same thing with pornography. And this is really like a form of porn. This is this is torture porn. Just, it's just a it's desensitization. It's moral desensitization. It turns you into this sort of blank slate. Thanks, Matt, for one of the dumbest takes I've heard in a long time. To his credit, he did say he hasn't and he's not going to watch Squid Game. You know, ha having, having, having not watched the show and I don't plan on watching it. The fact that he made an eight minute video explaining that it is torture porn and that it will turn you into a blank slate and you should question your own morals if you enjoy a show like this could be seen as arrogance of the highest form it is feeding a part of me that probably should not be fed we can slot that right next to heavy metal will send you to hell rap music will make you a criminal and video games will make you a killer the reverend jimmy swaggart has taken the lead among tv preachers calling rock music the new pornography some of my favorite films of all time pornography of course and i enjoy watching this why do I enjoy watching pornography? It's fictional, but if you're sitting there watching it and enjoying it, forget that it's fictional. If you have in your mind the whole time, oh, this is fictional, this is fictional, then you can't enjoy it. And sadly, Matt is not alone in bad takes for this show. Other media outlets are also solely focusing on the violence, which is a shame, because if people like Matt had bothered to watch Squid Game, they would have found a show far removed from torture porn and throwaway violence. They would have found a show that asked profound questions. Is life luck of the draw? Is it all about the chips we are dealt? Are humans being wired to take stupid risks? A show that has a script that is subtle, elegant, and eloquent. There's some irony in me using the word eloquent. That clearly explores the sensitivity and complexity of human nature. It also has an honest depiction of people's desperation for survival, which allows for some feelings of sympathy for every Every player. Everyone just wants to live. And if they do sacrifice themselves, the story earns it. Because I can't stand the out of nowhere self-sacrifice we see so often. That's usually unnecessary or doesn't fit in with the dynamics of the characters. It's lazy writing at its worst. You didn't see that coming. Squid Game also allows its characters to be flawed, and they're honest, real-life, relatable flaws. Our main protagonist is a divorced dad who leeches off his own mother, gambles his money away, and constantly lets his daughter down. These flaws and bad decisions lead him to joining the games, even returning to the games after voting to leave. It was very reminiscent of a lot of Alfred Hitchcock characters. Hitchcock was famous for dropping ordinary people into extraordinary situations. Now, this isn't so uncommon, but with Hitchcock, So often the person ended up in their predicament because of their own actions or choices. Most famously, Marion in Psycho wouldn't have ended up the victim of horny Norman Bates if she hadn't have stolen the money from her boss. 
The chance to get out of crippling, soul-destroying debt by playing a few games. Why not? All right, then. The Squid Game is also full of interesting twists that aren't just inserted to trick the viewer. The twists in this show all service the story and lead it in new surprising directions. Two twist highlights that stood out, the first being the option to, as a group, vote to leave, which they initially do. This added so much to the understanding of how desperate the players were, especially when they returned to the game after finding out it's a life or death situation. <laughs> But I have to know, how badly had the husband and wife duo fucked up in the outside world that both going back into the game was the best option, even though only one of them would win and live? They probably just couldn't stand the thought of going back home and dealing with their kids in lockdown anymore. How many of you can continue with this insanity? The other twist highlight being when our resident criminal straight up murders someone in front of the guards, and then the guards do jack shit. It felt like the criminal was done for until the prize money went up. His realisation that player against player slaughter is now a part of the game was fantastic. And I love that nighttime player against player bloodbath. It was like a crazy zombie scene, just without zombies. <laughs> And for such a well-paced series that keeps the story moving along, all the main characters get room to be more than one-dimensional story elements. And most of the performances are really good. Not all, but most. <laughs> it's hard to believe it's Ho Young Jung's first acting role. She was a model five minutes ago, but she holds her own against some real talent here. A quick break from the squid slaughter to talk about today's sponsor, Surfshark. Now being from a large island down under, I know all about surfing and sharks. And the other thing I know all about is the need to have a good VPN. What's a VPN, you ask? A VPN is a clever little tool that hides your location and protects you from the baddies. Yes, all the baddies. So I can watch whatever I want, wherever I want. And the VPN I use is Surfshark. And the great thing about Surfshark is that you can run it on unlimited devices on a single subscription. That means you can install it on your phone, your computer, your TV, and more. And then no matter where you're in the world, you've just unlocked 15 of Netflix's largest country libraries, including the US and Japan. So hang on, things are about to get crazy. You'll also be able to instantly access other limited streaming services like BBC iPlayer and Hulu. It's just one click and all of a sudden your virtual location's changed. Oh, my favourite movie, Robot Head Does Japan. Plus, Surfshark encrypts anything that's sent between your device and the internet, so your precious <coughs> movie collection will be safe. Go to surfshark.deals robot and enter promo code robot, and not only will you receive a whopping 83% off, you'll also get three extra months totally free. See the link below. So if you need a VPN, and of course you do, Surfshark is the one you want, and you never know, they might just sponsor another video. <laughs> Now, was it all fun and games, or was there anything I didn't like about Squid Game? Well, firstly, I have to say, for the love of God, please don't watch the dubbed version. And before you label me some cinema wanker, let's just compare. Would you like to play a game with me? Nah, mate, I'm good. What's this bullshit, mate? Where's the fucking beer? <sighs> you call that a root? I don't think we should see each other anymore. <coughs> <coughs> so gone. You're all mine. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sorry, that was the Australian version, which was still better than the dub version on Netflix. That's atrocious. Now, we are lucky in Australia. We have a very mixed culture and a large Asian population. Many foreign films get theatrical releases here, and we also have many foreign film festivals. But the number one reason we are so used to reading subtitles in Australia is a TV station we have called SBS. Television used to be very boring in Australia. Then SBS started to only show foreign content. This meant that all of a sudden we had 24 hours of European nudity and sex on our televisions. Boobs, bums, and dongs beamed straight into our living rooms. We couldn't believe it. So as a nation, we instantly became interested in European cinema. Then as an added bonus, we soon realised that if you could glance away for a second to read the subtitles, a lot of these films are actually quite good. They tricked us with nudity to watch good movies. So I wouldn't even consider watching a dubbed version of a movie. Part of the joy of watching foreign films is seeing the differences in visual styling, having actors you don't know anything about, the different cultural norms, and the way different languages are delivered. The disconnect between performances and vocal delivery is way too distracting, and in the case of Squid Game, everyone just sounds so bloody weak. I think my boys and I should make a nice delicious soup with it tonight. <laughs> oh, you mean you want a way to turn this around? What? You scared? Not a chance. I'm not worried at all. I'm pretty good at getting things in the holes, huh? You sure about this? Huh? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no, we gotta fix that then. Well, once we're out of here, we'll have a girls' night out and make mojitos and everything, okay? <laughs> 어, 야, 너 진짜 안 되겠다. 너 여기서 나가면 나한테 남조선에서 겁나게 돈 쓰는 법좀 배워야겠다. And I still wouldn't be able to win. 나 다시 던져도 너못 이겨. I have to say, nearly everyone I spoke to who hasn't enjoyed Squid Game has been watching the dubbed version. So please, if as a young boy I could drag my eyes away from the European titties to read the subtitles, you can too. One thing I would question about the show, or maybe what's an interesting cultural difference, is how Koreans portray the foreigners. The white Westerners are fat, gluttonous, selfish weirdos who are only interested in satisfying their lustful needs. So they got them spot on. They're perfect. <laughs> No, I'd question how Abdul Ali was portrayed. Now I know he's not meant to be as smart as the other characters, but we were bordering on a simple Jack performance here. Yeah. Subservient isn't a strong enough word for how second class he is portrayed. Hooch had a more equal relationship with Turner and Turner and Hooch. Just call me Sangwoo, okay? You sure about that? Sangwoo? No, that being said, the people in Pakistan seem to be more annoyed that Abdul is played by an Indian dude rather than a Pakistani dude. They don't know how lucky they are. They've obviously never seen John Wayne playing Genghis Khan. You return empty-handed from the chase, my son? Not so, fine gazelle. And there's one other confusing thing to come out of Squid Game. And that's all the videos coming out from creators whose fan base is about eight years old. A little bit obsessed with Squid Game. I just finished the series, which is a brand new Netflix series. I absolutely loved it. I know it's bright and colourful and based around kids' games, but I'm not so sure you should be encouraging children to watch human torture and organ harvesting. No, <laughs> to be fair, I would rather kids watch Squid Game than watch these assholes. You guys want that money? Yes! Oh, that'd be the dream. Living next door to this guy and having to listen to that crap every day. I wanted that money! Player number 218, you are eliminated. Guard! A few minor things I would have liked to have seen done differently. And I have to point out, by no means did any of these hurt the show. The writing for the most part was way too good to let a couple of the creator's choices bring it down. But the rich guys could have been a little less cliched. Oh, you're real 69, huh? <laughs> and why did they arrive so late in the game? you think they'd want to get their money's worth. And the main reveal scene with the old man dying seemed like it dropped the ball a little. The old guy just seemed to become a one-dimensional villain. After everything they'd been through together, would have been nice if they had some sort of relationship. The fact that he's close to death life revolved around money and his own selfishness. Maybe he should have been encouraging the young guy to live the same way with his newfound fortune, even if it was done in just a completely cold way. After their amazing interaction the last game they played together, this final scene of them together just lacked any real kick. And I didn't need a sequel setup. He should have just got on that plane to see his daughter. Oh, the director ripped into LeBron James for saying the same thing. <laughs> So Squid Game is very good, right up to the pink hair. And it shows that people are willing to watch something new and something different. So stop giving us bloody sequels and remakes. 